is um, the budget constraint that the household will face in trying to, uh, you know, here you have a utility and so of course the household will try to maximize that utility, uh, but uh, the household will be subject to a budget constraint. So let's try to work out that budget constraint. Um, and so a budget constraint has always two elements. You'll have the income side of the budget constraint and um, the spending side, uh, expense side of the budget constraint. So let's try to uh, work them out separately. So in terms of uh, spending, what do we have? Uh, or expenditure. So what are the expenditure here? Well, so first of all, uh, we know that the household holds uh, a quantity M of money. So the household has to buy that money. Since money is a numeraire, the price of money is just one. So you have an expenditure M. That's going to be your first expenditure to purchase money. And each unit of money has a price of one. Of course, that's the definition of money being the numeraire. Um, okay, then we have an, another, uh, so what else does the household uh, buy? Well, of course, they also have to buy services. Um, and so how much do they have to spend to buy services if they want to consume C services? So here in the utility, we denote C the amount of services that are consumed, okay? Now, you remember that to actually consume one service, you have to buy more than one service because you also have to cover the matching services. And what we said is that for one service consumed, you actually have to buy one plus TAUX services. And the TAUX services are the services that will be here for matching. Do you remember? And TAUX being um, the matching wage. And so if you want, if the household wants to uh, actually buy C services, you actually need to buy C times 1 plus tau x. Where tau x here is what we had uh, introduced as a matching wedge. And that represents the number of matching services for one service consumed. <coughs> okay. So this is the total amount of services that the household want, uh, must buy. But then, of course, these ser services have a price, and that price level we've denoted earlier is just going to be P. P is just the price of uh, one service. You know, if there was heterogeneity, this would be the average, you know, some kind of price index, the average pipe price of one service. And so C times one plus tau x, that's the total number of services purchased, times P, the price of one service. This is, uh, therefore, uh, the expenditure to purchase uh, services. And so these are the two sources of expenditure. You have to purchase money, which will be the wealth that you hold, and you have to purchase services. Okay, now what, uh, what are the sources of income? Uh, so again, two sources of income. So first, we'll assume that uh, households have an endowment of money to start with. And we'll denote that by mu. They start, they start with some wealth, with some money, uh, and, th and then they'll be able to spend it to either, you know, uh, buy some money that they want to keep or buy services. And then what is the other source of income? Well, they are also going to sell services uh, to other households. How many services are they going to, to sell? Well, we know that the representative household puts K services for sale. We know that there is a fraction f of x 
of these services that are actually going to be uh, sold on the matching market. And then we know that each of these uh, services is going to be sold at a price P. So that's the income from um, selling services. And so here, just on the side, just uh, in terms of notation, so P, that's the price of one service, is yours that you buy or sell, K times F of X, that's uh, kind of the out output I found that the number of services uh, sold, and just to uh, make sure everything is clear, and then C times one plus tau x that we had above, that's the number of services purchased. Just to make sure we're clear on the notation uh, of all these elements that are involved in the budget constraint. Um, and so now, of course, um, the budget constraint just said that you cannot uh, spend more than what your income is. And so here we get very naturally the budget constraint for the household. So the, the budget constraint says that uh, income must be equal to expenditure. I mean, you know, technically your budget concern would be that uh, expenditure is less than income, but of course there is no reason to not spend all your income, you know, given that it's a static model. Um, so we can simplify instead of having an inequality, expenditure less than income, we can just say expenditure is going to be equal to income because that's what any optimizing household would want to do. Um, so income is equal to expenditure. And so uh, using what we have over here, so income is, mu, the money endowment, plus p, f of x, k, that's uh, income from selling services, is equal to m, expenditure on money, plus p, 1 plus tau x, times uh, c. So this is our budget constraint um, here. So now that we have the budget constraint, I just want to flag um, two things that the matching structure introduces into the budget constraint that you wouldn't see in a standard macro model or uh, in a Valrasian uh, in a Valrasian world. So first thing that you see is that. If you look at the first term, so you have an endowment, that's completely normal. Price, you know, for uh, what you sell, you know, that's kind of like a wage here. The P is totally normal. K is the amount of labor, that's all, that's totally normal. But you see that you have an F of X here. Um, so that's a first thing that the matching structure introduces is that uh, F of X, remember, is a selling probability. And that's completely new to the matching model. So in a Valrasian world, what you would have is uh, you would have f of x is just equal to one because um, you know you, you remember the Valrasian assumption that you can sell any amount of services or goods that you want at the given at the market price. So f uh, would necessarily be equal to one. But here, because we're in a matching world. Uh, f of x is strictly less than 1. So that's the first element that's going to appear in the budget constraint that's non-standard, that not everything that you supply is sold. Second element that appears is this tau of x here, the matching wedge. And the matching wage, you know, is here because <clears throat> you remember we have a cost of uh, visits. Um, and again, that's very specific to um, the 
to the uh, to a matching world. If you are in a Valhazian world, you could buy whatever you want at the given price. You don't have to, you know, visit the market. Uh, this does, you know, visiting a market doesn't cost anything. Um, so this wouldn't be here in the Valhazian world. This matching wedge would just be equal to zero, whereas in the matching world it's positive. <clears throat> uh, and that's because there is actually a cost in terms of a resource cost from um, you know buying things and finding the right seller that fits what what exactly you want to buy uh, and uh, and going on the market and finding that person. Um, and so these two uh, these two elements will you know they they are the the elements that are going to modify the household's behavior that influences the household behavior and that show up in the household problem that arise from uh, from the matching assumption. So matching wedge. On the buying side and the selling probability uh, on the selling side. But nevertheless, we can still treat the problem, as we'll see, of the household as maximizing utility subject to a budget constraint. It's just that your budget constraint is going to be um, slightly modified. <clears throat> 